Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened at the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, and then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be Don't Breathe, number two would be Mechanic Resurrection, number three would be Hands of Stone, number four would be Suicide Squad, and number five would be Sausage Party. And unfortunately, I only got one out of five of my predictions right, mainly because one of the movies I predicted actually wasn't in the top Top 10 at all. I saw that it was going to be playing at a theater nearby me, but I just didn't check how many other theaters it was opening in, so I might as well just cover it real quick since I did predict it. Hands of Stone opened at number 16 after opening in over 800 theaters only, and it made $1 million. That's pretty good, I think. I'm not entirely sure what the budget is, but then again, I don't care all that much because I hear it's just a generic boxing movie. Anyways, let's go on to the actual top 10. The first one is Don't Breathe, the only prediction that I actually got right. It made $26 million this weekend, and that is very good for the film, especially since the budget is $9.9 million. If you want a round, it's 10, but still, this movie did very good any way you look at it, and I actually did see the movie, and I also had an annoying audience member in there, too. <laughs> uh, I'm... I don't know if I should make a video about that guy, but I'm definitely going to review Don't Breathe tomorrow. All I will say is, wow, what a film. Uh, number two is Suicide Squad. This weekend it made $12 million, but unfortunately it has not crossed over the $300 million limit yet. It is still stuck at 200 specifically $282 million. Now, it's still doing well. It's still a huge box office success, especially worldwide, but... The fact that it still hasn't made over 300 million yet, when Batman vs. Superman kind of did that, like, kind of early on, I think, it's kind of concerning, especially since it's been number one for so long, and now it finally dropped to number two. It's starting to descend a bit, and it hasn't even crossed the 300 mil line yet. I'm sure it will, like, maybe next week, maybe two weeks from now, but it's definitely not going to be as big as Batman vs. Superman, which I'm sure the studio was hoping for, making this movie be the best one and then having people forget about Batman vs. Superman, but no, it's almost as disappointing, if not even more disappointing than Batman vs. Superman, but that's just me moving on to number three, which was very surprising to see, Kubo and the Two Strings. This movie actually is clinging on for dear life, and no, it didn't make a ton of money this weekend. It made $7,909,000, and that adds to a total of $24 million. It's still not close to its $60 million budget, but I'm just so happy that last week Kubo opened at number four, but this weekend it was able to stay at the number three spot, even if it didn't make as much money as I wanted it to. That is super good. I'm glad that more people are at least making an effort to go out to see this really important movie, because it is a very important movie. I'm glad that people are actually making an effort to go out to see it. And number and four, we have Sausage Party. This weekend it made $7,665,000, and that adds to a total of $80 million. That's very good for this film. It's getting close to $100 million. Will it get there? I don't really think so. It'll get to, I think it'll get to like $90 million, and then it'll end its domestic run there, but it's still doing very good. More, I think it's doing better than I actually first thought it would do like I knew that it was going to be kind of popular since it is a, an animated R-rated film with by Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg but I didn't think it would make as much money as it did so good on you sausage party anyways number five was mechanic resurrection holy crap this weekend I made seven million five hundred thousand dollars and that's on a budget of 40 million I think this year this is going to be the transporter refueled like you know how the transporter refueled was an action movie that opened up at the end of August or be the beginning of September, and then it didn't do too well at the box office. Yeah, I think Mechanic is kind of like that movie, especially since both of them are Jason Statham franchises, even if Jason Statham wasn't in Transporter Refueled, but that doesn't matter. The point is, Mechanic Resurrection so far is shaping up to be a big bomb, and was anyone really anticipating otherwise? I mean, I'm shocked that it actually didn't make a little bit more, like at least $10 million, but I'm not surprised that it's actually bombing right now. I don't think anyone should be surprised, honestly. But anyways, number six was Pete's Dragon. This weekend it made $7,282,000, and that adds to a total of $54 million. It is $11 million away from crossing its $65 million budget. I'm hoping that it gets there, because even though I don't think it's a perfect movie, I actually really didn't like the movie. I would like it if it did at least cross over the budget line, even if it isn't doubling the budget or tripling it or anything. I just want to see it have, you know 
better results than the BFG, which it is about to do, domestically at least. I haven't checked worldwide, even though I probably should have. Anyways, number seven was War Dogs. This weekend it made $7,255,000, and that adds to a total of $27 million. And that's $13 million away from its $40 million budget. I'm surprised that it actually dropped from number three all the way down to number seven, though. I'm a little shocked that it didn't have as much staying power, but hey, at least Kubo and the Two Strings is still in the top five. That's, that's the most important part and I still do have an interest to see this movie apparently it's fresh now or something it's been flip-flopping between 59% and 60% on Rotten Tomatoes not saying that that is the um, overall judgment of what movies I see obviously I mean but I'm um, still War Dogs is a movie I'm interested in seeing hopefully I see it very soon anyways number eight is Bad Moms this weekend it made five million seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars and that adds to a total of 95 million can I just say that this movie has already whatever the five drupal uh, thing is it's almost at a hundred million dollars domestically what have we done as a society why did we make this movie such a big success do we know do, do we realize what could possibly happen now do you do you realize that there might be a bad moms too now i actually haven't considered that before until now and that that's really worrying i hope they don't do that but Hey, anything can happen. They made Ride Along 2, after all. Anyways, number nine was Jason Bourne. This weekend, it made $5,230,000, and that adds to a total of $149 million. You'll notice that a lot of these numbers are very neck and neck. Like, the, I just went through a bunch of seven millions, and Bad Moms and Jason Bourne are at the same five million number, which I guess kind of shows that the summer season is definitely dying down, and everyone's already seen a lot of the big movies, and now that the summer's dying down, people are going back to school. Not me. I go back next week, but uh, I guess that really shows that the summer season is really starting to end off. Kind of sad. I want summer to go on forever, but it can't because you have to grow up or something like that. I don't know. The point is, this movie's doing very, very well. It made a total of 149 million. Once again, I just wanted it to get over 200 million, but hey, this is not a bad number. At least it did better than The Bourne Legacy. So good on you, Matt Damon and Paul Greengrass. And finally, number 10. This was a big surprise to me. Ben Hur. This movie dropped very much so. It made $4 million this weekend, and that adds to a total of $19 million. Not even close to its $100 million budget. This is a big bomb for Paramount. Well-deserved, though, because this movie kind of sucks, and I'm glad that this is actually about to leave the top 10 altogether. That was very fast. I didn't expect it to leave as quickly as it did, but I'm not complaining. So, anyways, now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Now, I'm going to say number one will be Morgan. I think this movie is going to be really an, an in interesting movie that a lot of people probably have seen a lot of. I've seen a lot of commercials for it, so I think people will look at it like, oh, what is Morgan? And maybe they'll go see it. Then I'm going to say number two is Don't Breathe. I'm going to say number three is Suicide Squad. Number four will be Kubo and the Two Strings. And I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to say number five is The Light Between Oceans, the new uh, film from the director of The Place Beyond the Pines. It's expanding, or it's, this is the official release. I'm not entirely sure, but it's only opening in like 1,000 theaters, so I'm going to put it at the number five spot but maybe it won't be there. We'll just have to find out next week. But if you got your predictions right for this weekend, you're going to get a shout out right now, unless you didn't get it right then. Whoops. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.